Alexander Shelley, yeah. this is your first visit to our orchestra. Yes. And is it your first visit to Norway as well? No, I have been to Stavanger. I went a few years ago to Stavanger and uh, and a very happy uh, experience there. Uh, I did Brahms and Elgar with them. Uh, but this was before they had their new hall. Mm -hmm. uh, and I haven't been there since. But this is my second visit. Um, and of course, I'm... Uh, very excited. This is a this orchestra. I mean, I enjoyed yesterday very much our first rehearsal. But of course, the orchestra has a, a great reputation and a great history, as you can see on the wall here. So it's a it's a privilege to be here. Yeah, it's wonderful to have you. you. Uh, we're gonna bring lots of light into this week's. Mm. I think we have uh, linked uh, the legendary Mozart Requiem mm -hmm. to Wirklicher Wald by the Norwegian composer Arne Nordheim. Mm -hmm. Uh, what uh, what kind of connection do you see between these well, two Well, it's interesting. It's interesting you, you say we're bringing light into the week because it's true. Um, the music, both of these pieces, bring light with them. Um, but of course, they're about death, and I think uh, the the connection is of course there. We we have the Mozart Requiem in the second half, but uh, I'm going to say Nordheim. I can't pronounce it properly. Excuse me. Um, his 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 work is is it really fascinates me. His, I mean, it begins with this poem. Mm. Uh, I mean, my fascination begins with the poem, Rilke's um, Todeserfahrung, yeah. so experience of death, um, is an incredibly beautiful poem. I mean, he's an, he's an astonishing poet and writer. Um, the the density and the and the the romance and the evocative language he he uses is is incredible and of course uh, I mean I'm lucky I studied in Germany and it's a language I speak I'm lucky to be able to read this poem in the original and the reason I say I'm lucky is because when you read translations it's very difficult at least in English mm. to recreate the density of the language and and the the yeah, the evocative nature, every, every word and the place in the sentence of the word, um, as you would expect, uh, is is perfect and, and adds a layer of meaning. And I find um, in in the original, it's 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 very special. And for those um, for those people who don't know the poem, um, it is about uh, the loss of someone close. Mm. Um, and he begins in the first two paragraphs, the first two stanzas, um, with this description of the life we lead as, as playing roles. And in the third paragraph, he describes the moment of loss as being a moment of clarity, um, wirkliche Wald, the mm. true forest, mm. wirkliche Grüne, the, the real green, um, and describes how, ironically, in that moment where you're aware of death's existence, you, you experience this loss, suddenly everything in life becomes clear, and then, then he goes back to, to, to living life. And I suppose um, the, the, the thinking behind it is that uh, death is something that even though, and he describes this in the poem, even though um, we all have a, an abstract relationship with it, we all know it's going to happen to mm. us one day, mm. um, there is a there is a negativity around it, of course, because of, it's the end of what we know. Mm. Um, but the, the the point of the, the the poem and the the beauty of the poem lies in this idea that there's a there's a truth in that moment of passing into the next life and a truth about the next life that um, that uh, that brings somehow more optimism to life. Um, and so I understand why Nordheim engaged with the poem. I understand why he why he took it um, and he he works with it so beautifully it's the beginning of the piece is is devastating it's 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 it it is there is a real scream from the choir the mm. the, the chorus screams their notes mm. it says scream this yes. and the the way the orchestra begins is like a scream it's very intense and difficult and you feel this weight of living mm. um, and the, the the difficulty of living and then um, you have a few minutes of this, and the 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 beginning of the poem is sung by our wonderful soprano, and um, and then he moves into this section of of the loss happening, and suddenly there being a reality, and he changes. He goes into a much more tonal language. He he uses many more, you know, major chords. That he adds some notes, but it's 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 a brighter language, and the 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 meter changes, the tempo changes, and then at the end. 
he returns to the idea from the beginning. But he adds then quotes from the book of Job. So mm. Adam was born of woman. You know, mm. man was born of 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 woman. Um, to add another sort of transcendental layer above it. Anyway, it's 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 about loss and it's about death. But as you said, there is something in this work that brings a lot of light as well. Mm. And the the part from the book of Job is sung in Hebrew. Yes, in Hebrew, it, yeah. exactly. And interestingly, and the when, poem in of course and in the German. poem in German. And when you when you put the the Hebrew above the the German, actually they fit the the sounds of the languages amazingly. The way he's put them, they fit very well together. So unless you're listening very carefully, you don't necessarily hear that it's uh, two different languages. Mm. No, I really hope that many uh, of our audience can get a chance to read this uh, beautiful poem, Todes Erfahrung. Yeah. In uh, I would just have to say in Norwegian because it's nær døden oplevelse. Um, it's actually better in Norwegian than death experience. In I'm my sure. own, uh, at least the title, mm. and you get some kind of um, feeling what it is about. Absolutely. Um, and that's the thing, Todeserfahrung in German isn't a strange word. Mm. But death experience, when you say it in English, it doesn't mm. sound right. It doesn't already, you know, even the title doesn't feel like it's, it feels like a translation. Mm. You know? Yeah. So, um, in the, it's going to be a, yeah, new experience, I'm sure, for yes. many people in the audience. And there's a cello solo, big choir. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and the the cello soloist is a, uh, one of the solo cellists from this orchestra. Yes. And he's doing a, a wonderful job. He's yeah. playing it so beautifully. Björn Solen. And of course, Nordheim is a, a national hero in many ways here. Yes, he is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's a wonderful music. Pieces. Yeah. yeah. This is your first time you conduct Nordheim. It's my first yeah. time uh, conducting his music. And, and I have to say, I think this is a beautiful entry point for for me for his music it's i i want very much to do this piece again i'm i'm going to look for places to program it because it has this you know it it can connect to a requiem mass but mm. it can connect also to to programs about poetry and the use of poetry and music it's that's also something that interests me very much because i think that <coughs> when we as musicians and when audience members if you if you have a a text like that um it also offers us for, with the music another dimension yes. so sometimes yes. you you hear particularly with new music there'll be works that 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 use a musical language that's more challenging mm. uh, more abstract um but as soon as you link it to words it often gives you an insight into to the composer's thinking and actually brings the music even more to life or more quickly let's mm. say to life than than if you have to live with the piece longer to 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 understand it mm. and then in the second half we play the legendary Mozart requiem, requiem. Uh, and it's not even uh, completed by Mozart. No. But uh, at the same time, we all want to hear it again and again. I know. And and of course, this idea of the the completions is is a very interesting one. You know, mm. who which version to take? And there are many. Um, you know, I I must say there are many wonderful completions and very brilliant completions and completions that make a lot of sense as well. Um, the I'm sure everybody knows the 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 story, the history. But the um, just to to remind them, 1791. Mm. Um, what happened was Count von Walsegg, mm. von Walsegg, um, who, who was a, a wealthy and very cultured uh, man. He lost his wife, Anna, um, and she was only 20 years old, mm. and he was only 28, I think. Mm. But he commissioned, he, he had a habit of commissioning works from great composers. Um, and he would pay them a lot of money, but then he wouldn't tell people who composed the piece. He mm -hmm. would either just have it performed or he would say it was his, mm. you know. <laughs> but he loved music. And, and she died uh, at 20 and he commissioned Mozart to write a requiem for her. Um, and this was supposed to be performed on the 14th of February 1792, so a year after her death. Mm. And uh, Mozart received the commission in, I think, July of 1791. And uh, he was uh, he was uh, writing the Magic Flute, and mm. he was writing his uh, you know, clarinet concerto and other things. And then he got to the Requiem and to, to beginning to writing it. Actually, on my birthday, October 8th, mm -hmm. is when he started it. And it's nice... Um, you know, we're performing this in, in late October. This is exactly the time of year where he was writing it. It was mm. between the uh, the beginning of October and November 20th. Mm. 
mm. um, where he became bedridden. He was very sick, and so he, he, he became bedridden on November 20th, and he, he died then on December 5th. Mm. So that's the timeline of, of, of when it was written. And he completed s certain movements, so the, the, the Requiem at the beginning of the Introitus, the first thing you heard, he completed everything. Mm. Um, and then following this, bit, bit by bit, he completed less and less. So we have the Kyrie fragments, we have fragments of other things. And In fact, in the score I'm using at the front, the Baron Rider score, there's, there's all these, you can see exactly what he wrote. They, mm. they show you every fragment printed, uh, mm. and then you go into the Seussmeyer completion. Mm. But for various reasons, um, uh, well, mainly financial, it was important that it was completed. Mm. So he, uh, Mozart, had been paid half the money in mm. advance, but the rest would be paid on completion. And, um, of course, Constanza, his wife, needed yes. money. Mm. Um, so she went um, to another composer, Abler, mm. first, and asked him to complete it. Um, and he started work, and then he, um, he said he couldn't complete it, so he gave it back. And then she went to Zeusmeyer. Yeah. Who's the completion we he know? Was a student of Mozart. As exactly. Well. Yeah. Mm. Um, and uh, and he then completed the version that we know, and um, and actually several of the movements were performed uh, in December, apparently 1791 already, uh, in in memoriam Mozart. So the mm. things that Mozart had completed were were, were uh, performed. Um, so it's a it's a lovely. And very romantic story mm. around it in every Beautiful. way. Just the idea of the, you know, this poor young girl dying at twenty, and her husband, who's so young, uh, who loves music so much, commissioning this requiem, and then Mozart himself dying, and and of course many myths and stories have grown up around it further. Mm. So um, uh, Pushkin wrote Mozart and Salieri, the the, the little play, mm. um, which was then turned into an opera, and then the this idea that. Salieri had an, an, an involvement in it, um, lives on through the film Amadeus, the yes. great film Amadeus and the play Amadeus. Um, and so there are all these levels of mystery and romance around the piece. Um, and it's, of course, incredibly beautiful music. And I feel sorry for Zeusmeyer because basically, even in the movements where it says Zeusmeyer, all the good stuff our instinct is like, oh, that must have been Mozart, it's <laughs> yes. so good. Um, and mm. if there are any voice-leading problems or if there are any um, orchestrational problems, we think, oh, that must be Zeus Meyer. <laughs> you know, the, so I feel sorry for him. On the other hand, we all know his name because mm. of, of the Requiem. And um, uh, I, I, like, I like doing the Zeus Meyer because mm. it's, it's kind of like... Um, when you have an unfinished painting, you know, a great old painting that you know was finished by somebody else from the same period. Mm. Now, nowadays, we can go back to what the original was and complete it in maybe a, a more technically perfect mm. version or a version that might actually more, more really represent the wishes of the Mozart of the time. Mm. But there's something romantic about that original completion and something, I mean, it is still incredibly beautiful music. Yes. And um, you yourself, you grew up in a very musical family. Yeah. Both your parents were are professional pianists. Yes. And your grandmother was your cello teacher. That's right. Yeah. Could uh, could you have become anything but a musician? <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, it was it was uh, it was sort of my first language. Mm. I think it's definitely the first language I really heard hmm. when I was in 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 the womb. Um, at the time, my parents were playing a lot together, and my father was recording a lot of uh, a lot of music and performing a lot, and and so I was being bumped around here with the piano in my head, um, and and so I don't know, it was it, yeah, sort of my first language. The, my parents always made an effort, a, a strong effort, to make sure I received a very broad education. They were aware that uh, music, uh, that life can be quite. <laughs> you know, you know, yes, it has and, to and be sports, also. yeah, yeah, and and they were always saying to me, "Look, here are the other options. These are the other things you can do in life." And and I went to a, a lovely school and, and and really received a lovely education for which I'm very grateful. But they always said to me, "Do music, hmm. but you have it has to be your only passion. You, you yes. have to, you know, you have to wake up wanting to do it." And and um, and I have to say with the you know I love the piano and I loved the cello mm. but I remember having points where as much as as I as I loved the sounds I, I 
I did have points where I would wake up questioning it. I would say, well, you know, if I if I have to wake up for the rest of my life only wanting to play the cello, you know, the, the, the cello being everything to me, is it my thing? And And I had moments of questioning in that. But with the other thing, scores, with studying music and mm. learning about it and and the music that's written for orchestra and, and the instrument of the orchestra, um, I, I could wake up every morning and be completely obsessed by it. You know, I still am. Yeah. I, I will often do 14, 15, 16 hour days because of rehearsals and because I have to study. And it goes like this for me because I just, I, I love it so much. So the answer is I, I'm sure there are other things I could have done and um, and would have been very interested by uh, because life is interesting, you yeah. know. But um, but in truth, the thing I'm doing now is, is my uh, obsession. Yeah, that's... You know? Yeah. That's great. It has to be this way for exactly. all of us. Yeah. And uh, you grew up. Uh, you met also uh, Maris Janssen yeah. as a young boy. I did. Your, yeah. Your father. My father was was him. performing with him, mm. and uh, it's nice. I, I was so happy when I walked into this room <laughs> that there was a coffee machine, <laughs> yes. first of all, and then to see all these wonderful uh, these wonderful faces. What an amazing history this orchestra has. But uh, yeah, I remember meeting him uh, when they were performing together, and. Um, he, I was already at this age when I was young, very interested in conducting. Yeah, how, when did it start your oh, interest for conducting? Oh, I think, I think probably when I was, you know, the first thoughts about conducting and 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 orchestral music was was even when I was like nine, ten, eleven, mm. twelve. I think because my parents used to give me music to listen to when I was going to sleep on cassettes, <laughs> and and I uh, I always used to love listening to the Beethoven symphonies and to. Uh, Rimsky Korsakov or Mahler. I found the you know the colors of an orchestra, mm. um, this 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 palette that never ends. You know mm. every single color, mm. um, so so fascinating. But then I think when I was twelve, thirteen, around the time that I met Maris, um, I, uh, uh, I I think it was starting to become more my part of my life. And I, when I was at my school, when high school, when I was I think thirteen or fourteen, I first conducted the orchestra there. Mm. Um, but he 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 always gave. Um, you know, but back then he was giving such good advice. Uh, he was talking about how he thinks about rehearsals, mm. um, and uh, I recall him being very focused, almost nervous before the rehearsals. And my mother was asking him about this, and and he was just saying how important they are to him to create mm. a special atmosphere with the orchestra, to f create a special connection with the piece mm. in rehearsals. Um, and I understand, you know, living that life now exactly what he means you 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 have a responsibility as a conductor to 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 try to try to to make the week so much about the music you know to to mm. to because mu orchestral musicians work very hard you know and they have a lot of, of of music that goes across their um their uh, desks and you, you perform the mozart requiem a lot you know it comes up in life and um just to try and remind people sometimes through the storytelling through musical ideas to, to to how to connect with the music again so that you as a as a collective you uh, you have a real experience in performance that that that's not that's not always easy no. um, and I and so I understand his 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 focus there yes. and his nervousness um, and uh, and I remember also talking to him about uh, Oh, I was shy. I think my parents talked to to him on my behalf about about the idea of studying conducting, and he was mm. pointing. You know, if you have a good teacher's stick technique, you can learn very quickly. Mm. Um, and he was giving names of people he thought were good, but but then he was talking about everything else that's involved in conducting, and 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 mainly it's this this study and getting to the core of every piece, so that you are as a conductor a great representative of the composer. That's what your job is. Mm. You you have to you have to get as close to, to understanding firstly the craftsmanship mm. of the piece how it's put together but of uh, th but the why you know why why they chose to to do this um and then to find a vocabulary physical vocabulary technical vocabulary and then um uh, and a, a sort of imagination vocabulary that that represents them you know mm. so it's it is a it's a you know if you think about it like that the, the responsibility of a conductor to to, is is huge, yes, you know, both to the musicians and then the composer. Yeah. At the same time, you just have to be yourself, and of you have course. to be so true to yourself. Yeah. And you have to just absorb it. Yeah. But you're lucky to uh, 
have the background and you have, you know what this you have known all your life what yeah. this world is about. I guess so. And that's very lucky. Yes, yeah. I yeah. think that's uh, yeah. an advantage. Yeah. 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 Uh, we're really looking forward to this week, the continuation, and uh, looking forward to the lightness and the darkness and everything. Yeah. This diversity. Yeah. Me too. I can't wait. And mm. thank you for chatting with me. Thank you. <laughs>